could you break us down how Masterworks, you know, the whole platform and process works? Because what you're doing is so cool. This idea of, you know, a painting that we all know by Banksy, like that Mona Lisa that you had on your platform, uh, that we've all heard of Banksy, like we all love his stuff, but we don't have $5 million to buy that painting or even more probably. So, you know, th this, how do you actually go to about securitizing that and, and uh, kind of walk us through the steps on the platform? Yeah, totally. So it's very similar to how a company goes public. So very similar to how, you know, Tesla goes public. Um, you know, we, we file an, an offering circular with the SEC uh, for a single painting that's qualified by the SEC. And then we sell shares to, to retail and accredited investors. Um, it was, it was a pretty, you know, it sounds simple on the surface, but I, you know, I can tell you the very first offering they filed with the SEC, I don't even know now, two and a half years ago, I think, um, it was not simple, right? <laughs> right. I think that went through 12 or 13 rounds of commenting, took them 15 months to qualify it. It was a pretty, it was a pretty uh, interesting financial product at that time because you have one asset sitting in a vehicle that doesn't produce cash flow and is public. Um, so at that point, you know, I, I think they, there, there were lots of questions that lots of people had. Um, now, after we're doing, you know, we're doing one offering every seven to 10 days and we're, we're getting them through uh, the SEC like clockwork. So that, that concern is gone, but, um, but yeah, it's definitely, it, it was definitely revolutionary at the time. Wow. And so when investors invest in, in the paintings, I know they all started like $20 per share. Um, can you talk to us about how frequently the liquidity happens and, and sort of like what happens if you're an investor in that share? Yeah. So there's, there's two ways that investors get liquidity when investing in, in, um, in a painting through us. One is that we sell the painting and we tell investors to assume that it's going to take us three to seven years to sell a painting. Um, sometimes as many as 10 years. So this is, this is traditionally an illiquid asset class that takes time to really generate returns. Um, but we have launched now secondary markets for these securities where investors are now trading securities before the painting sells with each other, which is a great way to get interim liquidity if you, if you don't want to wait until the painting sells. So just like people trade stocks and companies, they're now, now trading shares and paintings. Wow. So once you do the initial public offering, you get all that capital, but you're also facilitating the secondary uh, market. Fascinating. And can you fill us in a little bit about the traction you've seen? Like how many paintings have you offered? How many, much money's on the platform? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're raising, uh, you know, we're, it's growing quickly. We're raising, I don't know, $150 million plus a year. Um, we're doing an offering every seven to 10 days, which is a one to $10 million painting. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of focused right now on just ramping up all parts of the business. So we're buying paintings as fast as we can. We're onboarding as investors as fast as we can. We're buying as much marketing as fast as we can. Um, so it, it, you know, it's really, it's really, uh, it's really been great traction. We just passed a hundred thousand investors on the platform, uh, last week. So that's a big milestone. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I think most investors look at this asset class and they think, particularly in today's world where we have kind of the Corona dynamic, people feel like public equities are overvalued. You know, a lot of us feel like we're living in two different economies, um, kind of the real world with unemployment and, and the public equity markets. Uh, fixed income obviously isn't compelling. People are concerned about inflation with the, with, you know, the amount of, of money that the Fed is printing. And they don't really know where to put money. And you, you look at the art market and it is one of the oldest asset classes. Contemporary art historically has performed at around 13% a year since 2000. Um, we did the first research study with Citigroup in 2018 to show that art was a, an uncorrelated asset class. Um, I think the highest correlation factor was 0.3 and that was with real estate. Um, so it's this really interesting asset class that we believe has a role in any portfolio, but you know, historically there wasn't, there wasn't a good way to invest in it. So I, I would play devil's advocate here as an art collector myself. I don't even really buy this argument, but I'm curious of the intrinsic value of art. Like people often ask yeah. me, I'm a Bitcoin bull. Like what's the intrinsic value? I have a whole thesis there, but you know, how, why is, why is this one piece of painting wor worth millions? And then I know eventually we're going to hit the first billion dollar painting. So this isn't stopping. This is just eventually yeah. the first trillion dollar painting or whatever. But uh, like, how do you think about the intrinsic value of art? Because I always thought of it as like, capturing culture in a moment in time and to me yeah. culture and so i'm an investor in you know the flamethrowers that elon musk puts out like i have those in storage about eight short shorts <laughs> uh, i love sneaker collecting like I, to me i also look at those kind of products of yeah, culture yeah, yeah. as art as well so i'm kind of curious how you like this whole collectible art world where's the intrinsic value there 
Look, I don't think things that, that have value have to have only intrinsic value. And let's, let's use like a good analogy, right? So if we, you know, if you and I buy a house, whatever, I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, right? We buy a house in Kansas City and it's $100,000. The intrinsic value of that house arguably is the same as a beachfront mansion that's $20 million, right? Like it has the same practical purpose, um, but one is $19.9 million more expensive. Um, uh, look, I think there's lots of things. Gold is another example. If, if people collectively believe that something has value, Bitcoin's another example, then it has value. And I think the, the thing that we've seen with art for literally centuries is that if something has cultural significance, people believe it has value. Um, and that, that's caused prices to go up over time for, for many of these artists. 